the size, the athleticism, and the combination of all of those things with his gifts that you simply can't teach. I don't give a damn about how this kid in Europe looks. Several months later. And 2019 Kia NBA Rookie of the Year is... Luka Doncic. I believe that Phoenix is going to take them out in Game 7 on Sunday. I think I wouldn't be surprised if this is a route. That's where I'm coming with this. I hope I'm wrong. I could be wrong. I doubt it. 24 hours later. 35, 10, and 4. In four elimination games in his career, he's averaged 38, 9, and 9. Dallas, 123 to 90. Uh, and it wasn't that close. No. When looking at ESPN over the past decade, their one big mega superstar has undoubtedly been Stephen A. Smith, and he's quite literally the face of the network. Not due to his great insight or awesome takes, but due to his personality and his willingness to say absolutely anything to get ratings. And when looking at the network in general, one trend I have noticed is that ESPN clearly prefers the American superstar athlete to the foreign-born player. And looking at Stephen A. in particular, when it comes to Luka Doncic, Really for the past four years, he's gone out of his way to discredit him and downplay his overall impact. So in today's video, we're going to debunk the worst Luka takes from Stephen A and finally set the record straight. And the first take we're going to look at involves Stephen A Smith comparing Luka Doncic to Devin Booker and who is the better overall player for the future as well as in the moment. But for the purposes of these playoffs, I would take Booker over Luka because Luka doesn't shoot with accuracy the way that Devin Booker does, especially from the free throw line. That matters to me. That matters to me in this series. And, and it, it would matter to me throughout these playoffs. Long term, if we're looking at the future, with Luka's incredible upside, we understand how great he is already. But right now, for the purposes of right now, when I look at Booker, I just think that we continue to sleep because the dude looks one dimensional. He's a scoring machine. He can finish at no the basket. He's got a mid range here. game. He's got a long range game. I got to give credit where credit is. So, Stephen A. right there, pretty clearly, said Devin Booker was the better player in the moment in last year's playoffs. And I do want to note, he said that when Phoenix was up 3 2 on Dallas in the Western Conference semis. And if you want to talk about cold takes, this one right here is one of the coldest of all time. As Devin Booker in the next two games would average 15 points, 5.5 boards, 2.5 assists, 6 turnovers, on 29% shooting. That was Devin Booker in the full games in Game 6 as well as Game 7. Compare those numbers to Luka Doncic in only the first halves of Game 6 and 7, and he's still better than Booker was in those games adding 23 points, 8 boards, 4 assists, not even 1 turnover, on 54% shooting. I want to make it crystal clear that is Luka in one half of basketball compared to Booker for the full 48 minutes. And look, I don't want to downplay Devin Booker, but being compared to Luka Doncic is not a fair comparison. As Luka right now arguably is a top 3 player, and on my personal list, he's top 5. Compared to Devin Booker, was borderline top 15 and all-star lock. If you want to look at their overall games, Luka Doncic, he's a better scorer, better rebounder, better passer, he's more clutch, he has better handles, and his overall skill level rivals the best players in the NBA. And Stephen A's overall argument for Booker being better only deals with shooting, which is a small aspect of basketball. But looking at the full picture, Luka Doncic is clearly the better overall player. And if you thought that comparison was bad, Stephen A. Smith next compares Anthony Davis to Luka and who is the better player when healthy. Here's my question. You both said Anthony Davis is a top seven player. Look, I like when Anthony healthy. Davis. When healthy. When, when, he when healthy. Luka, Joel Embiid, Giannis, Steph Curry, LeBron James, Nikola Jokic, and Kevin Durant. If he's better than those guys, by, if that's what wait, you think, by all wait. means. Okay. We're only talking skill. What you do on the basketball court when you're healthy. J.J. Redick, are you ready for this? I'd take Anthony Davis over Luka. I'd take Anthony Davis over Jokic. Cocaine's a hell of a drug. <laughs> that right there from Stephen A. Smith was a trifecta of awful NBA takes. 
saying AD is better than Luka, better than Joker, and is a top 7 player at this moment in time. As in the past two years, Anthony Davis has done absolutely nothing to warrant that superstar status. And Stephen A was pretty clear in saying, Anthony Davis, when healthy, is better than Luka. Now, first off, AD in the past two years has not once been fully healthy, but even looking past that, Luka still is the better overall player. Look at AD's past two years and the stats he's put up. Averaging 23 points, 9 boards, 3 assists on pretty good shooting with an abysmal 40-36 and 36 record. Compare that to Luka, who averaged 28 points, 9 boards on assists with a very impressive 44-21 and 21 record. And looking at Luka's Mavericks team during this time period, I would say he had less help than Anthony Davis, who had LeBron James, Russell Westbrook, and a plethora of great role players. And I want you guys to notice one thing, looking at Stephen A. Smith, in these player debates, he moves the goalpost constantly. As comparing Booker vs. Luka, the one thing he emphasized was shooting and overall efficiency. For Stephen A. Smith then, that was highly important, the deciding factor on the better overall player was. But when comparing AD to Luka, that same logic doesn't follow him. As looking at both these players, Luka Doncic, he's the much better overall shooter. Looking at paint scoring, mid-range scoring, the 10 to 16 feet range, as well as three pointers. Comparing both these players in overall shooting, Luka Doncic clears AD pretty easily. Now looking past Anthony Davis and that awful take, next up Stephen A compares John Morant as well as Luka and who he want on his team in the playoffs. I'm gonna go with John Morant at number one. Because last time I checked, as spectacular as Luka is offensively, as spectacular as he may be in the postseason, John didn't fold in the postseason when he arrived. Mm -hmm. Have you lost your damn mind? Let me stop you right there, Stephen A. Smith, because at this point, you're flat out lying. In the NBA bubble versus the Clippers, that series was simply legendary. As in game four, down 2-1, he had 43 points, 17 boards, 13 assists, on 58% shooting, and had any buzzer-beating jump shot to give Dallas a win. Even looking at Game 6, facing elimination, Luka individually was fantastic, having 38 points, 9 boards on assist, on 54% shooting. Even going one step further, looking at Luka in 2021 versus the Clippers again, in Game 7, had 46 points, 14 assists, 7 boards, on absurd shooting splits. I have absolutely no idea what Stephen A. Smith is talking about when he said Luka folded in the playoffs. And even looking at this year's playoff run, in Game 7 versus Phoenix, he had 35 points, 10 boards, 4 assists, on once again insane shooting. And the first half single-handedly outscored the Suns team. And looking at the playoffs in general, when it came to 4th quarter scoring, he ranked 3rd, averaging 7.7 .7 points on 47-34 and 78 splits. Once again, proving Luka in the playoffs doesn't fold and has not once choked at a bad series. And on top of it all, he shows up on defense as well. I'm not asking, I'm not saying that he's some stout defender, but he is significantly better Luka, than Luka. Luka. There's no question about it. So when I look at it from that perspective, I'm saying I see Ja giving you, for the most part, what Luka gives you offensively, and defensively, he gives you more. It's ridiculous. It's obvious what's being done out here. It's on a nightly basis. I hope the world can see now what's really going on out here because it's getting ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. This man, Stephen A. Smith, does not watch basketball. And when it comes to John Morant, at best, he's an average defender. And when comparing both Luka and John Morant, I do think Luka is a better player and it's not even really close. But let's say someone out there thinks John Morant is better than Luka. If you're going to argue that, the one thing you wouldn't bring up is defense, as both these players defensively are not great. And Ja compared to Luka, watching the games, looking at the stats, is not a better defender. As in his three NBA seasons, his defensive plus minus has been negative every single year. And for Memphis overall, they're not a bad defensive team. In 2020, they ranked 15th in defense, 2021, 6th, and this year, 4th. And Jaw this past year compared to his teammates, who played at least 40 games, ranked 10th in defensive plus minus, and was the only starter in the negatives. Compared to Luka, whose plus minus on defense was 1.8, 
and Dallas the 6th best defense of the entire NBA. Now that right there is my last point regarding Stephen A. Smith and his terrible Luka Doncic takes. As you could tell, for some odd reason, he doesn't like Luka, and very rarely, if ever, gives him credit. So as always, thank you guys for watching, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.